So my name is Joshua and I work for ACFO. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about ACFO Open Aid and about making aid development uh, more transparent. Um, uh, well, first, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what we've done so far and then a little bit about what we're going to do in the future of um, OpenAid.nl and a little bit of a sneak preview of our uh, little pilot version of an uh, intermediate version. So first, ACFA Open Aid wouldn't be there if it wasn't for the uh, for IATI. IATI stands for International Aid Transparency Initiative, and as you can see, it aims to make information about aid spending easier to find, use, and compare. Before, for example, if you want to look uh, at which organizations are working on health in Kenya, now you have to go to each organization page, look for their reports, and see if they're working on health in Kenya. This is not really efficient. And so in 2008, they made up uh, the IATI standard, which is a reporting standard for, uh, for reporting about aid development. Um, at the moment, about 140 organizations have published in IATI, and the amount they've published is about 75% of the official development assistance. So it's, go it's getting there, but there's still a lot of organizations in my feeling that should publish in IATI because if everybody would publish in IATI, we would just have one big, um, one big registry where you can just find everything and just if you search for health in Kenya, you can just find all the organizations that are working on health in Kenya, which would be an ideal world for me. So, but what happens with this data? Because as you can see, it's, uh, it's for geeks a little bit when it's published. I mean, I don't get this. It's not really user friendly. So it has to be transformed and visualized. So that's why, together with Zimmerman and Zimmerman, we started OpenAid.nl. Um, at OpenAid.nl, the IATI data of the Dutch government is visualized. So in 2011, they published their IATI set, and um, we, together with Zimmerman and Zimmerman, visualized this uh, to this platform. Here you can search for uh, on, on countries, you can click on a country so you can see which aid activities uh, the Dutch government is sponsoring in Kenya, for example, if you click on that. Uh, you can also select by sector or type in keywords. For example, if you want to see what your organization is getting, just type it in and you can see what has been published. Um, well, uh, OpenAid provided us with a framework, OpenAid.nl, um, which can also be used to load in other ERT data sets. So that's how the product of ACFA OpenAid, uh, ACFA OpenAid came to being. Um, so every organization could get their own ERT website. Um, so what we did so far with that is we made OpenAidSearch.org. On OpenAidSearch.org, all the ERT, uh, all the published ERT sets are read in. So you can not only see the Dutch one, but you can see all the files that have been, um, has been, have been published in the ERT format. So you can filter on country, publisher, budget, and sectors. So this really brings us one step closer to finding out what really is happening <laughs> somewhere and who is working where. Uh, at the moment, there are more than uh, 76,000 activities in, uh, in uh, openaidsearch.org. Um, after that, uh, oh, I'm going one too far, sorry. Um, in 2012, ACFA and Zimmerman and Zimmerman started the online transparency initiative together with UN Habitat. And we first based it on a technology that we had with OpenAid.nl, but then we developed new features and a new user face as well. Um, and this is how it looks. I think it looks a lot better than the old OpenAid.nl because it's 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 got a more a more I think a bit a cool look and feel to it and uh, the user face is also easier to use. So here you can also browse through all the ERT project data that you and Habitat published so far, but they uh, ha had have different features as well, like indicators and measuring city prosperity. Um, well, this is how the indicator page looks like. I think this is really cool because we have a timeline as well. So uh, UN Habitat measures indicators from, this timeline is from the 1950s up to uh, 2050, because they, um, they think to know what's happening there. <laughs> and uh, for example, with total population, um, if you go up to 2025, you can see that um, 
India will have a larger population than China, so I'm very curious how that's going to work out, if that's really going to happen or not. Um, but it's really cool to see what they think that the prospects will be. So, uh, about the future of openaid.nl. As you can see, the UN Habitat page is a lot nicer and more user-friendly than the openaid.nl page. We made that in 2011, and it was one of the first websites where ERT data was visualized. So it's getting a little bit old and outdated, so we really wanted to give it a new look and feel, and also get more people to look at the web page, because that's not really, it's, it's not that much in the, um, in the community right now. So openout.nl, the second version, we had a key objective, and that's to provide effective aid reporting platform for the aid development sector, enabling them to report, communicate, and visualize their current and historic aid activities, and creating national awareness for transparency and accountability. So that's really our goal. Um, so how are we going to do this? Well, the first step is the easiest one. We're just going to learn from the lessons that we learned at making you habitat.org. So uh, giving that same user interface, um, so it, it looks a lot, a lot nicer, because that's the benefit of a product like OpenAid. Whatever we you make in other website, whatever functions or uh, visualizations, we can also use for other OpenAid, uh, other OpenAid websites. Um, another one is the integration of Aqua RSR. I will come back to that later. I want to have more visualization so it's more appealing for people and that people can just play around with the data themselves as well. Um, we're also thinking about connecting it to other open data sets. We haven't really, uh, we don't know which ones yet, but an example would be if you could connect it to the World Bank, you could have uh, World Bank indicators about a country. So if you click on Kenya, you do not only see the projects of the Dutch government in that country, but you could also see the GDP and uh, p population and other uh, data, for example, the World Bank has. But we're still working on that, and it's all still open for discussion, so if you have any good ideas, you're welcome to share. <laughs> um, about the connection with Agva RSR, I think m most of you know what Agva RSR is. Uh, really simple reporting. It's a platform where you can, you, you see it here, where you can uh, publish a lot of project information and also give updates from the field. Uh, it's got really rich project information. Um, if you look on OpenAid, uh, that project information is not that rich. Um, if you want to publish in IATI, um, you only have to do a few fields to be compliant, and the Dutch government hasn't filled in a lot of information yet. They only filled in the fields to be compliant. So at the moment, it's mostly focused on financial information. So as you can see, for example, here is uh, Connect for Change, which is a consortium. They're receiving about 40 million dollars uh, euros um, for one project. So the information that shows in OpenAid now is that uh, 40 million dollars goes to Connect for Change, which the lead organization is IACD. So they just see one pro project partner. They say IACD gets this commitment and this disbursement. Th th those are shown on OpenAid, and there's not really rich project information. Together with six other organizations, we're in the connect, uh, five other organizations, we're in the consortia Connect for Change, and we're, we decided to put all the projects of Connect for Change online, which is not just one project, but there are at the moment 79 projects in RSR with a lot of rich project information that shows um, a lot more in depth uh, what is going on. For example, um, the OpenA project doesn't show where the, where the, project is taking place or who the partners are. And on RSR you can see in which countries it, it is taking place, who the partners are, and even see updates from the field. So we really want to connect that to make the, to make the data more richer. Um, so now I'm just going to show you this intermediate version of Open8. So this is how it looks. As you can see, we took a lot of the UN Habitat uh, look and feel, and this is um, this is our pilot intermediate version, which the guys of Zero Man and Zero Man put together for us in just a few weeks and to show you what the possibilities are. So if we search here for the Connect for Change project, for example, um, and we click on it, you can see here, you can see the general IATI data. So that's really not that much. You can see multi-sector aid, 
uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs start date. Uh, it's not that rich, rich data, and the financials are also part of it. So it's just commitment and disbursements. Um, so what we did right now is we added one uh, tab saying RSR and local project, in which you can see the projects that are really taking place. So this is how we did it so far, and this is an intermediate version, and we, um, yeah, we want to build it to something that, that can be worked with and looks even better, and yeah. Well, <laughs> and that's it. I don't know if there's any questions. No? Okay, thank you. Sorry. So in, uh, in ACFO, we obviously have quite a lot of uh, information on projects, detailed information. Um, I think we now have over five, 400 million worth of richer project and program information, 1,000 projects or so. So what we decided to do um, is to try and link this, if we know from which budget items they came, try and link what we can. Right, that's step one. But at the same time, allowing everybody that has richer project information to do the same. So that's what we're also looking at. How the, can other partners that want to add or make connections do the same thing? So that's the approach. So it's twofold. And I think we're now at the phase that we're really yeah, trying to, to link, in a sense, the information that the government has. Because the government usually only knows we funded this up to there. But the information that comes back, monitoring and reporting, is paper-based. And it goes, you know, not into the system. So from a government perspective, they only actually know what they're funding. And, and a person might know more, or an account manager might know more, but the system or it's of the information is not there. So the core approach that we're saying is, hey, partners in the chain, whether you're a WHO or UNICEF or an NGO, they have that information. You know, you know which project you're involved with. So open it up so we can link it, and so everybody has a better insight. That's the step that uh, we're uh, moving towards. Thanks. Yeah, maybe, maybe to add to this and share, um, share some, uh, some information what is currently happening, uh, to see the relevance of this. Currently, we are discussing with the French government and the Dutch government about the restructuring program in Mali. <coughs> I don't know if any of you have heard it, but last week, 15 May, uh, donor community collected more than $3 billion for the reconstruction program in Mali. That has to come in the coming three years. And now there is a problem, because there are over 30 donors, and how to coordinate among them, and how to keep track of projects and, and financial. Uh, so before uh, anything happens, every donor will have his own information streams, etc. So what we are trying to do is to start with bringing all those IAT data on Mali together for Mali and then couple it at a national platform to follow projects in RSR. I don't know if it's going to happen, but these type of, of, of projects and needs are there in the donor community. And it's quite exciting that we have these technologies to make that happen.